right now. A woman finds her parents dead in a Harlem apartment on Easter morning. What happened overnight? United Airlines has another new policy. What their employees can and cannot do before flying. Plus, clear coffee. How you can get that caffeine kick without staining your teeth. The Pixel of a Music Box starts right now. Live from Studio 2A in Pix Plaza, this is the Pix 11 News at 5 with Kaidi Tong. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kaidi Tong. You're watching the Pix 11 News at 5. We begin with a shocking discovery in East Harlem, Easter morning. An elderly couple found dead of apparent carbon monoxide poisoning. Pix 11's Miles Miller is live for us right now with more on this tragedy. Miles. And we knew that couple, uh, that couple's daughter knew that something was wrong because she said her parents would never miss church. She called repeatedly. They did not answer the phone. And that's when she came to the apartment and made the gruesome discovery. We're supposed to go to church today. Choking back tears, Rita Crawford said she had plans to attend church with her parents Easter morning. They had dinner Saturday night, and when they didn't answer the phone this morning, she went inside the apartment and was immediately hit with the smell of gas. FDNY Deputy Chief James Coyne. No food in the oven, but the oven was on. Crawford found her father, 81-year-old John, lying in a bed in a pool of vomit. Her 71-year-old mother, Doris, was sitting in her recliner, motionless. She called 911, and when firefighters arrived... Our units opened the door to the apartment, and our CO detectors went off. The apartment didn't have smoke or carbon monoxide detectors, although there were bases on the wall for the devices. Harold Atkinson knew them for decades. I just was with him yesterday. Yesterday, about 5 o'clock, right before I went upstairs, and we was hanging out, talking, dancing, you know, laughing. The couple went to church every Sunday. They were members of East Ward Missionary Baptist Church. Mrs. Crawford was regarded as the mother of the congregation. They were wonderful people. And I can't stress how important it is to make sure you have a smoke detector in your apartment, no matter how expensive it is. And some of them are expensive, but some are inexpensive. Make sure you get one. It could have prevented what happened here. There were, as you heard in the piece, uh, the uh, units in the apartment. They did have the framework for it, but there weren't actual smoke detectors that were working. Make sure you get them. It's the only way to prevent what happened here from happening to your family. Live in East Harlem, Miles Miller, Fix 11 News. Such a shame. So sad. Miles, thank you. The search is on for several suspects after a possible machete attack in the Bronx. Here is what we know so far. A 20-year-old man was found stabbed in the head, barely conscious. This happened around 3 o'clock on East 152nd Street and Wales Avenue in the Mott Haven section. The attackers were wearing gray hoodies and ski masks. Well, a shocking roof collapse at a church just days before Easter has not stopped the community from celebrating. St. Anthony of Padua's ceiling came crashing down Thursday night, just hours before a late night service. Nobody was inside the 98-year-old building at the time. Well, today, hundreds of parishioners, as you can see right there, crowded together inside the parish hall. They were clapping, they were singing, all to celebrate Easter. St. Anthony's is now accepting donations to try to cover some of the repairs of that roof. From decorative hats to Easter egg hunts, it is a day all about tradition, right? St. Patrick's Cathedral packed to celebrate the annual Sunday Mass before people headed out to Fifth Avenue for the Easter Parade. Pix 11's Jennifer Bisram has more from Midtown. From the mass and the parade to this beautiful weather, people who came out here today say this is one Easter to remember. Rejoice and be glad. St. Patrick's Cathedral was packed with parishioners praying and listening. Easter has the last word, not Good Friday. And God has the last word. As Archbishop of New York, Cardinal Timothy Dolan delivered Easter Sunday Mass. It's always good on Easter to see that the faith is still alive. The Fairchild family was among the thousands who attended. They came all the way from Florida. We wanted to celebrate Easter at St. Patrick's Cathedral, and we've never brought our children to New York City before, so that's why we're here. It was a rich and rewarding experience, and it was everything. It was the service itself, it was the, uh, the choir, the organ player, the people singing, everybody, I think, together worshiping Jesus Christ, and that's very important for us. 
after the mass outside of the cathedral, many more filled Fifth Avenue with their pastel outfits, flowers and decorative hats for the annual Easter Day Parade. This year, I just love flowers. I think Easter is about flowers. I think it's about color and it makes me feel so happy. And I started with three flowers. I sneezed and all of a sudden this is what happened. Stuck some wire in a tie and wrapped them around our heads and here we are. It was a day filled with family, fun and faith. And the people who came out here today say it's not just about Easter, but about the tradition. Outside of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Jennifer Bisram, PIX11 News. It's always a wonderful event, especially in New York. Thank you, Jennifer. A fire tears through a Montclair, New Jersey home early today, displacing several families. Take a look at some of the damage. The Mission Street home was absolutely gutted. Look at that. Firefighters say that fire broke out just before 10 a.m. The Red Cross says they are trying to help three to four families at least find a place to stay. Happily, nobody was hurt. A New York man lost his life after falling overboard into the Long Island Sound. This happened last night near Milford, Connecticut. Authorities say Richard Malucci and his wife were sailing back to Long Island when he fell 25 feet into the water. When marine units arrived on the scene, the 43-year-old was struggling to stay afloat. He died at the hospital. An investigation is underway. And police in New Jersey are investigating a fatal head-on crash that killed two people early this morning. This happened in the northbound lanes of Route 9 around 2.15 this morning in South Amboy. Police say a minivan driven by 51-year-old Purcell Livingston of East Orange was going the wrong way and slammed head-on into a car driven by 31-year-old Miguel Mendoza Chong of Perth Amboy. Both men were killed. Three passengers in Mendoza Chong's car were hurt, two of them seriously. And police have arrested a man just days after they say he groped a woman and then shoved her onto the subway tracks. Police say 24-year-old Kimani Stevenson approached the woman on the 14th Street Station subway platform Friday morning. He groped her, and when she confronted him, he shoved her and she fell onto the train tracks. The woman was pulled to safety by strangers, other riders. Thankfully, no train was coming, and she only suffered a broken wrist. Stevenson is charged with attempted murder, assault, and sex abuse. Well, United Airlines still trying to do damage control after serious fallout from the violent removal of a passenger on a recent flight. You remember this disturbing video. This prompted international outrage. It shows Dr. David Dow being dragged from his seat last Sunday, suffered several injuries, including a concussion, a broken nose. Now United Airlines says it's ending the practice of bumping passengers from flights after they've already boarded and been seated in order to give seats to staff. If employees want a seat, they have to book it at least an hour before departure. Well, it was a very nice day at Bryant Park. Take a look. Our cameras caught people sitting out, really enjoying the weather. Why isn't anybody on the lawn? Are they not allowed on there anymore? Look at those flowers. And here is a look, a live look from our city camera. Look at the little, is it clouding over there? Let's check in with Craig. Hi there, Craig. It did, Kaidi. It clouded over. We actually had a brief shower that moved on through the city. So now, after this incredible high of 87 degrees, as you can see at the bottom of your screen there, it's 73 in the city. So took a little bit of a dive after that shower and the coastal temperatures fell too. But even along uh, most of uh, across Long Island, the Connecticut coastline, it was at least upper 70s to low 80s. Only the east end failed to get much above 72. Look at our normal high of 62 degrees and look at these temperatures even got close to 90 in some uh, central sections of New Jersey. So where does that place us as the bunnies were melting as you, the little kids were carrying them all around? This makes it the second second warmest Easter on record 2017 there was the hottest 1976 it hit 96 degrees you can see the others in line here <clears throat> excuse me 62 73 57 and 1871 it was in the 80s but this this year number two temperatures around the city now in all five boroughs are basically in the 70s because of the shower that moved through you did not get the shower in Staten Island or in parts of Staten Island the way the rest of the region did so you're still at 83 now the coast is cooler not because of the showers but because of the wind that's now coming in off the water so these temperatures have dropped into the 60s while it's still in the 80 uh, 80s that is back across western sections of Jersey and on up into the Hudson Valley so down to 73 in the city still 84 Boston 
Boston, 84 in Philadelphia. Just incredible, but this warmth will not last. Here's a couple little showers that are moving on through that we just showed you. And this cold front right here, that's going to be moving through later on tonight, and that will drop the mercury. The winds will turn west and then eventually northwesterly for tomorrow. So it's back to spring for this week. No more summer. It's beautiful tomorrow, although quite cool middle of the week. And maybe a few shower threats, too. We'll talk about that coming up. Katie. I really don't care because my AC went out today of all days. Yeah. So I'm glad that the temperature is going to drop a Not little Not like bit. this, right. Oh, my goodness. Okay, thank you, Craig. Well, you know, early today, police took part in a special rescue mission in Brooklyn. Take a look at this. A duck somehow got tangled in a kite line. The NYPD special ops came to the rescue, and they posted this picture on Twitter. It happened in Red Hook Terminal. Can we get a closer look at that duck? Can you see it clearly? Anyway, after a while, police were able to remove the line and release the duck, who was not injured and went quacking off into the sunset or wherever. Tonight is the final curtain call for two Broadway shows. In Transit and Cirque du Soleil's Paramore are ending their run. You're going to want to hear which popular play is reported to be coming to New York next. Here's a hint. They're wizards. And coffee that will not stain your teeth. How a new brew won't mess with your pearly whites. Coming up. When you're New York's very own, you have a passion for pinstripes because that's how you dress for success. The Yankees are back when they take on the White Sox. Wednesday at 7 on PIX11. New York's very own. She's taking her landlord to court, claiming he won't fix rain damage that he's responsible for. But he's standing his ground, and both sides aren't backing down. Can Howard help settle this beef, or will it be up to a judge? Monday on the PIX11 News at 10, New York's very own. Future of footwear has arrived. Introducing knitted footwear from Skechers. They're lightweight, sleek, and breathable. And of course, they include Skechers air-cooled memory foam. The future is so bright, I just gotta wear my Skechers. Skechers knitted footwear. Futuristic comfort available right now. Hit Escape with great deals on great gear from Bass Pro Shops. And bring the kids for a free picture with the Easter Bunny. PIX11 News, sponsored by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. The Vatican was packed this morning for Mass. This is what St. Peter's Square looked like as Pope Francis del delivered his Easter message. He encouraged Christians to keep the faith despite the wars, sickness, and hatred in the world, he said. During Mass, the Pope also urged an end to what he called the horror and death in Syria. And he condemned the recent bomb blast that killed dozens on a crowded Syrian bus convoy. If you're in the city and you get a chance to peek out your window or you're just strolling along, check out the Empire State Building. Here it is. Look at how beautiful this is. All weekend long, it's been showcasing these pastel hues for the Easter weekend, of course. This is a picture actually from last night. Gorgeous. And it will have Easter colors, maybe different ones, again this evening. So watch out for it. It's lovely. Hi there, Craig. Hi, Katie. Nice weather, a little warm. It is, and very colorful, too, for today. Yep. And even our weather map, look how colorful that is here, too. You see a little bit of green that's right along the south shore of the island and the eastern parts of the island where temperatures are basically in the 60s right now. That's because of the wind coming in off the water, and the same thing holds true for the Connecticut coastline. Let me show you. For example, in West Hampton, it is 64, the humidity 60%, and southwest wind at 13. The water temperature is between 45 and 50, so it's taking a toll on the air temperature, but still, overall, just a fantastic day. Um, it's 73 in Morristown because you had a shower, but look at Belmar at 85 degrees right now. Southwesterly winds like that over land means that it warmed up. And like I said, Tom's River even got close to 90 degrees earlier today. The relative humidity is a lot lower. It's at 31%. And the city dropped down to 73 as well. And that's because we had a shower that just moved through maybe about, oh, 15, 20 minutes or so ago. 64% humidity in the wind right now, light westerly at 7 miles per hour. So you can see temperatures compared to yesterday at this time when we were talking to you. They are anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees above where they were toward 
uh, 24 hours ago in Tom's River, almost 25 degrees above the reading from yesterday at this time. There's that little batch of showers that moved through the city. There it is. It is now right along the Nassau Suffolk line. You saw a few that went through uh, the coastal sections of Connecticut. A few more right now that are right up and down the Jersey Turnpike here. They're moving over towards Monmouth County and behind me right there. That's the actual cold front that's going to be moving on through the region later tonight. And so that will bring the temperatures back down a little bit closer to normal. Tomorrow's still going to be a beautiful day. Even after this goes through, the temperatures don't cool down all that much. Just spectacular tomorrow. Today was too warm. Obviously, it was 20 degrees above normal. Tomorrow, we will be closer to 70. And then after that, that it doesn't work out like this anymore. In other words, it's definitely going to get colder. Here's what Futurecast shows. That line of showers and thunderstorms for later tonight around 10, 10, 30, 11, 12. That's going to be coming through the area. It starts weakening and breaking up. And then we break out for Monday morning. Monday afternoon, the clouds are clearing away. And after that, we don't have very much to uh, be concerned about at all until perhaps very late in the day on Wednesday. So what we're looking at right now is not as warm for tomorrow, but still a really nice day, about 70. And then as the winds start turning around, coming in off the water, a lot of sunshine for your Tuesday. But now we're back down 60, and that's a little bit closer to normal. And if you're ever looking for those temperatures and you want to get them at a moment's notice on hand, you can go to our app, get the severe weather, the alerts, the future radar, and much more at PIX11 News. Katie. Sounds good. Thank you, Craig. Hazardous waste being dumped on New Jersey government property. Those allegations made today by environmental activists and city council members in Mawa. Now people are worried those toxins will end up in the water supply. pix Levin's Christy Duffy is on this story. We have to understand something about Mawa in this area. We're in the highlands. This is, the, this is the place where the people of New Jersey get their drinking water. An anonymous message sent to town officials said there's been illegal dumping going on at a county property. Photos show a dirt pile purportedly riddled with lead bullet shells. This is the county's training facility for police, firefighters, and EMS, which includes a firing range. It's also the site of a town drinking water well, and it's pocketed between acres of reserved land. We have lead problems in the state equal to, if not greater, than Flint, Michigan. So to find out that a governmental agency somehow allowed for dumping of lead on public land, it's unconscionable. No one from the county spoke at this press conference, but in a statement, the county said they knew about this since April 6th. Mawa and the Mawa residents have a right to know what's going on knowing that the county was the one who made this mistake. The county stated that, quote, samples of the soil pile were obtained and sent for laboratory soil classification testing. The soil pile will be mitigated by a remediation professional pending the results of this testing. For now, they put a tarp over it. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is investigating with help from the state DEP. We want to make sure that those are responsible or held responsible and that the cleanup is done. Bawa's mayor did not stand with the councilman who went public about this at today's press conference. He has been in touch with the county. I think they've been very responsive. Uh, I think it's probably in officials' uh, best interest to find out the facts before we have press conferences. To date, no lead has been detected in the town's water supply. In Mawa, New Jersey, I'm Christy Duffy, PIX11 News. All right, some good news if you prefer your coffee strong and your teeth white. Get ready for the world's first colorless coffee drink. It was created by two Slovakian brothers. It's made from high-quality Arab coffee beans and pure water. No artificial flavors or sweeteners, but it's clear. And they're keeping their production process top secret right now. Clear coffee, I don't know about that. I mean, if it doesn't look like coffee. But anyway, it's only available in a few stores right now in the UK. So don't book a plane ticket yet because it's also available online. You can get this clear coffee tried out. Let me know. What do you think? I don't know. Anyway, regulars at Chipotle may have noticed they're paying more for their burritos. That's because the Mexican food chain has raised its prices at hundreds of restaurants. The increase was implemented in more than 400 locations. That's about 20% of the company's restaurants. The 5% hike is due to an inflation in wages and food, of course. For instance, the cost of avocados. That is on the rise, and sales have been on the decline since an E. coli scare a couple of years ago. We all remember that. Well, the annual White House Easter egg roll is just one day away, but it may not go off without a hitch. Why insiders are saying this could turn out to be one scrambled event. Plus, Melissa McCarthy returns to Saturday Night Live with her Sean Spicer impression. Here's Spicy explain Passover. 
And some ninth inning drama in Miami as the Mets try to even the series with the Marlins. Plus, the Rangers get ready for game three against the Habs at the Garden. It's all coming up in sports. Stay with us. Sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Furnishing your style. Her delicious and budget-wise dishes launched Sandra Lee into living rooms all across the country. But it was the celebrity chef's battle, long, years long, with breast cancer that showed just how resilient she is. Tam Sivadal caught up with New York's first lady doing what she loves most. She doesn't shy away from anything. At the end of the day, I want to stay alive. I want to be here. Six months ago, Sandra Lee sat down with me to talk candidly following her double mastectomy and reconstructive surgery. Breast cancer is not something that you go through alone. I was very lucky. I have Andrew. Not a day goes by. She isn't thankful. I had a tough couple of years. Thank How you. are you doing health wise? I just had my checkup and I'm good. And everything's great. At that time, the Discovery Channel was filming a documentary about her work with UNICEF. I'm coming in and working with UNICEF on a nutritional basis now. And New York's first lady is on the go again with a traveling cooking class, TV shows, and of course her partner, Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's a superstar. Everybody should know how hard he's working and always doing the right thing. How do you do it as a first lady? Because you are, you're busy. You've got your own career going on, and then you're right there next to him side by side. I just have fun, and Andrew just says, honey, do what makes you happy and what you want to do. So I just do the things that God wants me to do, which is be here, enjoy my life, and do as much as good work as you can. Hi. Happy Easter almost. We caught up with her just before her cooking class in Midtown, where she helps budget-conscious shoppers put together some great meals. You take time to, to go around the country, really, and teach people how to cook. I do small, intimate cooking classes for about 16 people. And I only do them during special occasions, so Easter and coming up Mother's Day. And this is one of our classes. And no matter your skill set. Okay. Good. Or lack of it, she loves it. What do, what do people uh, ask you the most? A lot of people want to know what do we eat at home. Right. A lot of hard boiled eggs, <laughs> bananas, almonds. I can cook Even those. Well. I can cook those. I love carbs. My sweetheart loves carbs. He's much better at his diet, I think, than I am. Um, I just wanted to be naughty for a little while, but now I'm on the get healthy track. It seems to be working, but she never forgets what's most important. Your health is all that matters, and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, Sandra has some new shows coming out later in the year. To find out more about her cooking classes, check out Pix11.com. All right, this week, Justice Neil Gorsuch will hear his first Supreme Court arguments. Which high-profile case is on the agenda? And the Boston Marathon kicks off in less than 24 hours. How many runners are representing the tri-state area? And a fire ripped through a New Jersey apartment this weekend. How the hundreds of displaced people spent the Easter holiday away from home. Live from Studio 2A in Pix Plaza, this is the Pix 11 News at 5 with Kaidi Tong. More than 43 families in Passaic are spending an Easter Sunday they will never forget. They lost close to everything in this massive fire last night. Pix 11's McGee Hickey is live for us right now in Passaic with more on how this community is coming together to help. Hi there, McGee. People are going to be allowed back into their burned out her. apartment building First. tomorrow morning starting at 7 a.m. And uh, people will be able to find out how much they lost for, on the first through third floors or if it's a total loss for them. 
you what know, do they think they lost? They lost everything, you know, because of, you know, water damage and everything. What a way to spend Easter Sunday. Some of the close to 200 people who lived at 112 Gregory Avenue hovered in front of their now boarded up apartment building 24 hours after a six alarm fire destroyed the fourth floor and damaged many others. Some were able to retrieve a few belongings last night. Found the laptop was completely broke, completely was in the destroyed because of the water. Tomorrow after 7 o'clock they'll line up and one by one we'll let them into the units to go in and just search and see what they can salvage, what they can bring out. Last night, PIX11 introduced you to 25-year-old Raisa Bravo crying, worried about her pets trapped inside the burning building. It's very hard. I have pets there that they're not trying to take them out. Late last night, Passaic's mayor, Hector Laura, and the fire chief went into the still smoldering apartment building searching for the Bravo's pets, two sugar gliders, a type of flying squirrel. The good news, they were safe and unharmed. Raisa could not be happier. I really, really appreciate all your help. You had been very good, very patient. I am amazed how my, my animals are safe and sound. I'm really blessed. Like, God is great. Other Passaic natives came by with donations. The Rivera family bought a trunk load of supplies to help the 43 displaced families get back on their feet. Passaic is near and dear to our hearts. Um, and, you know, this is a way that we can contribute and give back to the community that both me and my wife grew up in. And, you know, and we still have a lot of passion for Now, the Rivera family was directed to City Hall to make those donations, and the mayor is hoping there'll be more donations to come tonight, tomorrow morning, and for the weeks to come, because the, the 43 families really need them. We are live in Passaic, New Jersey. McGee Hickey, PIX11 News. Back to you, Kitey. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure good people are going to come forward with that. Thank you, McGee. Vice President Mike Pence is spending Easter in South Korea amid growing tensions in the Korean Peninsula. Pence arrived in Seoul this morning, hours after North Korea's failed missile launch. He briefly addressed the launch, calling it a provocation that the Trump administration is resolved to confront. The, white, the vice president also will visit Japan, Indonesia and Australia over the next 10 days. President Trump now responding to the protests seen coast to coast yesterday. We saw it here in Bryant Park yesterday afternoon. Demonstrators were demanding the president release his tax returns. The president has previously claimed that the public is not interested in them. But today, before he went to Easter Mass down in Palm Beach, he got on Twitter claiming these demonstrators were all paid. He tweeted, someone should look into who paid for the small organized rallies yesterday. The election is over. And don't you forget, your taxes are due Tuesday. Traditionally, as you know, the deadline is April 15th, but because that fell on a Wednesday yesterday, it was pushed back. Taxes will now be due, would have been due Monday, but tomorrow is Emancipation Day, and that's a legal holiday, so that is why Tuesday is the due date. If you need even more time, you can file for an extension. All right. It is confirmed. First Lady Melania Trump and her son Barron will move to Washington, D.C. this summer. The two have been staying, as you know, at Trump Tower in New York ever since the inauguration. It reportedly cost the New York Police Department $127,000 a day to protect them. But now a senior White House official has confirmed that this summer they're moving into the White House. A specific date has not yet been set, but it will happen after the school year. So I guess Barron's going to have to start a whole new school, school and all of that. All right. Starting tomorrow, Justice Neil Gorsuch will hear his first Supreme Court arguments. Judge Gorsuch was sworn in as the 113th Justice to the High Court last week. He fills a conservative leaning seat left vacant by the late Justice Antonin Scalia. One of the high profile cases involves a bakery that refused to design a wedding cake for a gay couple in 2012. Tomorrow's White House Easter egg roll will not be as big as previous years, apparently. The tradition has been hosted always by the First Lady ever since the 1870s. Melania Trump is expected to host it this year. Don't know if the president is going to be flying in from Mar-a-Lago for this event. But anyway, concern over this year's event arose after the maker of the commemorative eggs used in this egg roll reached out to the White House over Twitter. They let them know manufacturing deadlines were fast approaching. I don't really know what that means. And hopefully they'll have the eggs ready by tomorrow. And only 21,000 people are expected to attend this one compared to last year's 37,000. There will be aerials. 
Hi there. <laughs> okay. And speaking of aerials, there's well, one. There's one. It's absolutely beautiful outside. And we almost had hard-boiled eggs this afternoon around here, too, right? We did? It was, that was, that was so warm. Oh, you I could, see what you're saying. Okay, <laughs> sure. Cook them on the street. Right on the street, right. We were, this is the Sunny second. Side up. It is. This the second warmest Easter ever on uh, record. I know, yep. I'm feeling it. 87 degrees this afternoon. That is incredible. The highest was 96, and that was set back in 1960. 76. There's your coldest, there's your wettest, and it came early in 1970, and four inches of snow on the ground. This year, like I said, 87 for the city, as well as Newark. LaGuardia topped off at 88 and then had a pretty strong thunderstorm or a heavy shower with gusty winds move on through. So all these temperatures have dropped significantly over the last, let's say, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes or so, like the city, down to 73, 64%. These are LaGuardia's winds, 16 gusting to 45 when that shower moved on through. So now we're getting into some changes. It will not be as warm as it was out there today. Um, as a matter of fact, this week won't see temperatures is anything like what we had out there during the day today. So these temperatures along the coast are mainly because the wind is coming in off 45 to 50 degree water. Same thing for Bridgeport. So it, it definitely knocked it down. But as you saw, Islip even got to 82 before the sea breeze hit. 73 now in the city after the showers. You're still in the 80s, though, off to the west, southwest, and north of the city. And it's going to stay very warm through the evening. There's that little shower right there. It is now into central Suffolk County. It looks like it's just past the Sacticos, Robert Moses there, and it's continuing to move east across the island. A couple little showers that are going through portions of uh, Middlesex and Monmouth County, too. Look what's behind me here. That's the actual cold front itself that's going to come through later tonight and into tomorrow morning. So when this comes through, and it could produce another shower, possibly a rumble or two of thunder later this evening, 9, 10, 11 o'clock or so, we're thinking right now. When that comes through, the temperatures will come on back down. The rest of the week, it's a little unsettled, as you can see, and there are systems pushing into the Pacific. This pattern's completely different than what it was uh, just about a month or so ago, but still, the temperatures are going to come back down. The winds clockwise coming in off the water for tomorrow, so it's sunny. It's around 70. It's delightful. It's Tuesday's even cooler, and Wednesday, that next weather system, one of them coming in from the Pacific, could bring us some showers late Wednesday or Wednesday night and even cooler. 61 for tonight, isolated showers with thunderstorms around. There's your range in the suburbs. Tomorrow, it's a 70 degree day, which is really nice, mostly sunny, but it's closer to the normal high. There's your range across the region for tomorrow. And now we take a look at the seven day forecast. And so you see, we go back down by about 10 degrees tomorrow and 10 degrees on Tuesday to 60. And it's only in the 50s on Wednesdays. The clouds increase, and there's a chance of a couple showers in there right on into the first part of Thursday. But now the temperatures are coming back up again a little bit, but no more summer-like warmth. Not this week. Coming up, Kitey. Craig, thank you. Today marks 10 years since the Virginia Tech shooting. This weekend, the alumni returned to the university to remember the people who lost their lives. Brendan King from our Virginia affiliate has more. I just needed to be here today. It's been seven years since these friends returned to Blacksburg. This is an important year, I think. So both of us wanted to come back and show our support, not just for each other, but the community. Oya Ivanij and Arun Bala met at Virginia Tech and built a lifelong friendship. They also met a special person here, Caitlin Hammerin. She was our RA that year, just like a fantastic individual. Caitlin was sitting in French class on April 16, 2007, when a student barged in and shot and killed her and 31 others. She was just 19 years old. I was an econ, uh, which was the next building over. Oya and Arun remember frantically searching for their friend. I just remember waiting for her all day that day and she never came back. 10 years later and every year since the tragedy, the Blacksburg community comes together to honor the 32 victims. Saturday was the community picnic on the drill field, a time for Hokies to reflect and remember. I just want everyone to remember Caitlin and just how she was always the nicest, kindest human. They also ran the 3.2 mile run in Caitlin's honor. And even though a visit to this campus conjures up all those bad memories of that tragic day again, these friends say they had to return. We wanted to be here because yeah, it was the right thing to do, just to keep her soul alive. So 
it's an honor to be able to be here and pay memory and respect to her. And to pray that the senseless violence stops. I would just like if nothing happens, nothing like this ever happens again. Yeah. No one ever has to remember someone 10 years later that they're able to see that person 10 yeah. years later rather than having to remember them by a headstone. And that was Brendan King reporting. And another community that's pressing forward after tragedy is Boston. In 2013, three people were killed in the marathon bombings. Dozens of others were injured. Now this year's race is almost here. The marathon kicks off tomorrow. More than 32,000 runners are registered. 1,500 are from the state of New York, 575 from New Jersey, and 447 from Connecticut. Straight ahead, a special Easter message from Sean Spicer. Actually, it's Melissa McCarthy dressed as Sean Spicer, dressed as an Easter Bunny. You have to see the sketch. Also, two Broadway shows closed tonight. The popular play that's reported to be taking over one of the stages. And Joe? And sports, the dark night on the mound for the Mets. But would they get riddled in Miami? Plus, a former net with a buzzer beater in the NBA playoffs. It's all coming up in sports. Stay with us. Sometimes life can feel a little crowded. That's why I wear Skechers Delights. There's a roomier fit and a little extra height for a little extra lift. I'm a big fan. Of me or the shoes? Both. Delights from Skechers. Now with air-cooled memory foam. We've got new ways for you to love Boston Market rotisserie chicken, like Parmesan Tuscan with herbs, but only for a limited time. And now go to bostonmarket.com for a $5 coupon. Boston Market. Let us make dinner for you. Introducing the QX60 from Infinity. Lease the Infinity QX60 for $439 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. It's ticking. A New Jersey high school may be shut down for good if they cannot come up with a million and a half dollars by April 24th. That's just a week from Monday. Pixel 11's Diana Harry has what they're doing to try to keep the school running. For nearly 65 years, the hallways and classrooms here at Mast High School have been filled with learning, laughter, and love. Now they are in a tough fight to keep it that way. A flurry of after-school activity from art to archery. Welcome to Bayonne, New Jersey's Marist High School. This place is so special because it's like a family. Beeman Shaker is a sophomore. He contacted Pix11 News through my Facebook page, worried about the future of his school family. Our school needs help. Marist has only two weeks to fundraise one and a half million dollars. And if they don't, the doors will close for good. The announcement came late last month. Students were stunned. And I was crying, very emotional. Each kid here is an individual, and they're loved that way. So for me, to think of them going someplace else is hard. You're getting a little emotional. Marist is a private Roman Catholic institution. The brothers who own and operate the school, uh, the Marist brothers can no longer financially support us. Today, Marist has 300 students. Ideally, enrollment would be closer to 400. In a statement, the Marist brothers said the school continues to experience operating deficits. Much of their budget goes to financial aid. I have a school where 40% of my students get free and reduced lunch. So you get the picture. Raising a million and a half dollars in two weeks may seem impossible, but they have faith. If you believe in Catholic education, if you believe in Marist, if you believe in kids, please give. The school just launched a new video and social media campaign. We have an online donation page. We have a dance-a-thon tomorrow. It's a 12-hour party. We've been doing phone-a-thons. And they're appealing to their alumni to give back, with their sights set on one in particular. George R. R. Martin, uh, the writer of uh, HBO's Game of Thrones, graduated from Marist. They hope the Game of Thrones writer will hear about the potential fate of Marist and be moved to help his alma mater. I say it's a place where miracles happen all the time. In Bayonne, New Jersey, Ayanna Harry, PIX11 News. Be very cool if they heard from him and he helped.
All right, today was the last stop for Broadway's In Transit. The show just had its final curtain call about an hour ago. It started as an off-Broadway uh, play, then it was brought to the big leagues. In Transit was Broadway's first a cappella musical, exploring how New Yorkers connect, while In Transit, it only had about 145 performances. And Cirque du Soleil's Paramore also ends its Broadway run today. It uh, opened about a year ago. Now it's going to close so the Lyric Theater can undergo renovations. Once renovations are complete, it's reported that Harry Potter and the Cursed Child will make its Broadway debut. Well, comedian Melissa McCarthy was back on Saturday Night Live doing her iconic impression of White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer in this Easter-themed sketch. Sean Spicer was the Easter Bunny, explaining Passover in a very inaccurate way. So you got pharaohs like, you guys need to start making pyramids and stuff. And then the Jews... The Jews, these guys pass over. <laughs> literally. These guys literally float above the Pharaoh, kind of like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dreidel. I mean, it's amazing. And they're like, yeah, see a Pharaoh, wouldn't want to be you. Oh, my goodness. She is very funny. During her sketch, she also said, quote, everybody shut up so I can apologize. Spicy finally made a mistake, unquote. She was, of course, referring to the real Spicer's comments this past week, comparing Hitler to Syrian President Assad. All right, time now to take a look at some of the movies topping the box office this weekend. The Fate of the Furious, speeding its way to the top spot. The film had the biggest global opening in movie history. It took in $100 million here in the U.S., but raked in more than $530 million worldwide. It stars Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The Boss Baby was knocked down to number two. It took in more than 15 mil. And riding out the top three, Disney's live-action remake Beauty and the Beast, that took in more than $13 million. Joe's here, everybody. What yeah. do you have for us? Well, some scripted Hollywood endings the Mets have been dealing with <laughs> oh, the last okay. couple of days. The Mets trying to salvage a split in Miami this afternoon. The first three games against the Marlins back and forth battles, game four of the series, it followed suit. Dan Straley on the mound for the Marlins, and he had the Mets guessing all day. Five Ks and no hits for Straley as Marlins pitchers combined to no hit the Mets for seven and two thirds. Thanks in part to this defense. Fifth inning, check out the catch from Marcelo Zuna just hanging out at the wall as he robs Wilmer Flores of a hit. And Straley can't believe it. Bottom off the wall and left. Check out the play by Johannes Cespedes. Bare hands it, Ooh. hits the relay. And Cabrera guns down Ozuna at the plate, trying to score from first. The Mets are pumped. But the very next batter, JT, riddle me this. The first home run of his career, Addison Reed takes the loss. And the Mets drop three of four to the Marlins in heartbreaking fashion. Afterwards, Terry talked about the tough loss. It's a good baseball team. And, you know, we've got, we have issues like everybody else. But, you know, we're, we're trying to you know, mesh a, a pitching staff that we got to be careful of and a bullpen that we got to be careful of. And, you know, and we'll, we're going to be okay. You know, and we'll Later tonight, the Yankees looking for the three-game sweep of the cards at the stadium. Right-hander Michael Pineda on the mound, making his third start of the season. Pineda coming off a great outing against the Tampa Bay Rays in the Yanks' home opener earlier this week. The big righty retired the first 20 hitters he faced. He ended up allowing just one earned run over seven and two-thirds with no walks and 11 Ks. And well, the Broadway Blue Shirts are back at home at the Garden tonight for a pivotal Game 3 matchup against the Canadians. But they're facing the same problem in this first-round playoff series they They've had during the regular season, finding a way to win at home. After stealing, uh, always fun to be able to get that opportunity to play a playoff game in your home rink, and, and uh, especially here in New York, MSG. It's uh, going to be a great atmosphere. We're uh, pretty anxious to get here in the morning skate too, and, and uh, you know, start focusing for tonight. Round one, game one of the NBA playoffs between the Wizards and Hawks in D.C. this afternoon. And John Wall looked like a magician in this one. Wall with a playoff. Jazz take game one, 97 to 95. Johnson finished with 21 points, three rebounds, and three steals off the bench. And coming up tonight, we'll have highlights from the Rangers and the Yanks at 10. Katty. Look forward to that. Thank you, Joe. We'll be right back with Craig. One last look at your forecast for the weekend, okay? Pix 11 News, sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan Furniture. Furnishing your style.
Just a remarkable day around here. The second warmest Easter on record. Now some showers have been moving through and they dropped the temperatures and the winds coming in off the water. So it dropped the temperatures across Long Island. There's one or two showers. We had one in the city. There's the next line of showers and thunderstorms that's approaching us too. So anywhere between 9, 10, 11 o'clock or so, there could be another shower or thunderstorm and the temperatures work their way down so that by tomorrow we're right around 70. Here is the seven day forecast and there is your 70 for tomorrow. It is definitely cooler as we get on into Tuesday. It's only about 60. The next chance of rain, that's not until we get to about Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night that is, into Thursday. And by then, there's one brief day there where it's back in the 50s. But it does recover into the 60s and 70s as we head towards the end of the upcoming week. This was the warmest of the next seven days, no doubt about it. 87 is incredible. But uh, yeah. next several days won't be too bad. No, it sounds, well, I like that week. It's really spring I'll now. I'll take it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Craig, thank you. And that does it for us at 5. We'll see you back here tonight at 10, of course. Have a great night, everybody. Wonderama coming up next.